just a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the six-shooter, just one of the many great stars brought to you Sundays on NBC. Every Sunday, hear Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy in The Marriage, Sir Lawrence Olivier on Theater Royal, Lawrence Tibbet with the Golden Voices, Helen Hayes, Frederick March, Rex Harrison, and Lily Palmer on the NBC Star Playhouse. All of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the six-shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the six-shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as The Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. Now, in just a moment, immediately following this important announcement, you'll hear Act One of The Six Shooter. A lot of vacations start as a daydream and end as a daydream for lack of money. That need not happen to you. You can have extra money when you need it. Simply join the payroll savings plan for buying United States savings bonds. When your bonds mature, you'll get back $4 for every $3 you invest. And there's your extra money, your vacation, both guaranteed. Ask your employer about buying United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan. Then, join. Now, Act One of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. The rain had stopped, but the wind still carried slivers of moisture that cut into the boy's face as he rode along the edge of the creek. When he saw the yellow light from the back of the office, he pulled up slid out of the saddle, then tied a wet bandana under his eyes and walked slowly, quietly to the door. All right, put them up over your heads. Reach. What's that? Way up, both of you. Stay away from that shotgun. Now, look here, young fella. You, get over to the safe. Better hurry it up, mister. Open it. I said open it. That's better. Now, toss me that sack. Okay. Don't try to follow. Thanks a lot. Hey! See you. you dirty young... I'll show you. I'll show you. Oh. Rotten little... I hadn't figured on going through Clay City. It was an hour out of my way, and I was already a day late to the Jefferson Ranch where I'd signed up for the roundup, but Scar started limping from a loose shoe, and I didn't have much choice. So we had to head to the nearest blacksmith shop, so we turned north. Horse is losing a shoe here. Well, let's have a look. Raise it up, fella. Come on. Come on, boy. Yeah, that's split, mister. He needs a new one. Okay, boy. Can you take care of it, you think? Sure, sure. Bring him over here. Say, uh, wh- what happened to Red, fella used to own this shop? Oh, he went to Nevada chasing silver. I bought him out a few months ago. Is that so? Ah. You know, you, you, you don't look very much like a blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stronger than I look. Heavier, too. Yes, sir. Well, what do you think I weigh, mister? Oh, I don't know. Hey, why don't you take a guess? Say, uh, 120? 30? Oh, well, not more than that, I wouldn't say. <laughs> you a betting man, mister? Sometimes, yeah. All right. I say I weigh over 130. And if I don't, you get the new shoe for nothing. 
But if I do, you pay me double. What do you say? Well, now, I've, uh, you got a set of scales? Eh? Don't need no scales. What do you say, mister? Is it a bet? Uh, don't seem to be no way of proving it all. Eh? All you got to do is lift me up. You look like a man who can judge weight. What do you say? <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, it's a bet. All right, mister. Just heist me. If you don't think I weigh more than 130, the shoe is free. Come on, heist me up. Uh, I haven't ever tried to judge man's weight before, but... I... Now, here we go. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm packed solid, mister. Real solid. Well, you're packed tighter than a stair. You must weigh 150. <laughs> you see? You see what I tell you? 158. <laughs> Horseshoe's going to cost you money, mister. But you ain't the only one. Ever since I bought the shop, there ain't been a stranger come through Clay City but what he paid double for his first horseshoe. <laughs> you ain't sore, mister. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's a fair bet. Eh? Sure, sure, yeah. sure it was. I told you I was heavy and I look. That's what folks call me, Heavy Norton. My real name's George, but everybody calls me Heavy. What's your name, mister? Ponset, Brett Ponset. Oh, they call a six shooter? Well, doggone it, I've heard about you, mister. I sure heard about you. <laughs> well, I sure have. Would have recognized you, too, if I'd have noticed your gun. Sure is fancy, ain't it? Say, do you mind, uh... You showing it to me? No, no, no. Here, catch it. <laughs> oh, that's real fancy. Just like Sheriff Schofield said. And you know something? He says he's seen you fire six shots with it while Whitey Jackson was getting off his first bullet at that time down at Eagle. Now, well, the sheriff kind of likes to build up a story. You know? Well, he swears it's the truth. Well, uh, here's your gun, Mr. Fawcett. Thanks. Sure. You was mighty quick in getting into Clay City. How'd you hear about it so fast? Hmm? Hear about what? Why, the holdup at the Fargo station last night. Ain't that why you come? Mm, no. No, I was heading past town and turned off because Scar got a loose shoe. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? A fellow holds up the Fargo office, kills one man, maybe two, gets away with $5,000, and 12 hours later, you ride into town. Ain't got any idea who did it? No, sir, not a single solitary one from what I hear. Like I say, the deputy agent was dead when they found him. Other fellow, Fred Wilmer, a friend of his, got shot up pretty bad. Ain't done no talking yet. Doc says maybe he never will. I see. Well, does uh, Sheriff Schofield take out a posse? Nope, ain't nobody to go. Most of the men signed up for the Jefferson Roundup. Left town day before yesterday. Here's the Jefferson Ranch paying good money this year. Mm-hmm. You seen the sheriff this morning? No, not lately. He might be over to his office. You could try there. Yeah, I think I'll walk down there while you're fixing up Scar. Sure, Mr. Fawcett. Darn good idea. Sheriff Scofield will be real glad to see you. A couple of doors this side of the sheriff's office, I saw the Wells Fargo sign nailed up next to the window. The place wasn't locked, so I went inside. One of the chairs was upset, and there were some damp stains on the floor. The cast iron safe against the wall was standing wide open, so I kicked it shut. And then I went out in the back stoop. There was some more blood on the steps, and then just red mud. Right at the edge, I saw the hoof prints. They trailed off to the side of the creek, and it Whoever made them had headed west. I let one knee down into the mud and looked at the prints real close. The horse had been wearing one shoe different from the other three. Uh, a sharp rock must have cut into it somewhere or another. Not enough to split it, but just enough so that the print left a sort of a jagged line, like a fancy handwriting. Huh. You find something, Brett? Huh? Oh, Oh, hello, Sheriff. Oh, I was just heading out your way. Yeah, I just saw Heavy. He told me he was in town. Did you find something? I don't know. I don't know. Did you see these hoop prints? Yeah. Well, uh, Don't mean nothing. Trail gives out a mile or so down the creek at the fork. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Has Clay City had any other trouble lately, Ed? No, not a bit. I guess any town's got to expect a hold up once in a while. Well, I heard it was more than that. Yeah, that's right. Fred Wilmer able to talk yet? I'm afraid not. Doc said he'd let me know the first time he come around. Took him out to his ranch on the other side of town. You've been out to see him since last night? There wasn't no reason. Uh, well, it might good be a 
good idea to be there just in case. I thought maybe I ought to stick in town. Uh, well, it don't look like anything more is going to happen here. I, uh, why don't I... I'll get Scar and meet you out at Fred's place. Huh? I can handle this alone, Rip. Well, sure. I was just offering to keep you company, Ed. I'll meet you there. <laughs> up, Mr. Pontus. Tied him up around the side so he'd be in the shade. Well, thanks very much. Mighty fine horse you got there, too. Uh, you find Sheriff Schofield? I told him you was in town. Yeah, yeah I found him. Figure out anything? No, no, not so far. You will. Sheriff's a good man. You and him together, you'll get whoever done it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, you're, you're the only blacksmith around here, aren't you, Eddie? Yeah, only one for 40 miles, yes, sir. Did you ever see a horse with a shoe that's got one jagged edge, left hind leg? A lot of shoes got jagged edges, Mr. Parker. Yeah, I know, but I... Now, let's see here. Let's see, I'll, I'll try to show you what I mean. I'm, I'm not much of an artist, but it, it, it looks something like this. Mm-hmm. It's... It's... It's sort yeah. of like that. Yeah. Uh, seems to me I did see a shoe like that just the other day. Well, sure. I remember. Told me I'd get a new one for it. Ben Schofield, that's who it was just the other day. Ben? That's right, Sheriff's kid. You know him, don't you, Mr. Ponson? Sure. Well, I haven't seen Ben for a couple of years, though. Well, but... sir, you wouldn't recognize him if you saw him now. That boy just sort of growed up overnight. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he has. Return to James Stewart as the six shooter in just a moment. Here's a reminder about some of the wonderful entertainment that's yours for the listening each Wednesday evening on the NBC Radio Network. There's comedy for everyone when you set your dial to NBC for such programs as You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx and The Great Gildersleeve, starring Willard Waterman. The Great Gildersleeve provides 30 minutes of top flight entertainment that your whole family will enjoy. Then, when it's time for Groucho Marx, watch out. Groucho throws a mean ad lib. And there's a barb at the end of every one of them. Listen and laugh as this marksman trades quips with his contestants from the studio audience. It's a riot of fun from top to bottom when Groucho Marx plays You Bet Your Life. Also on Wednesdays, listen to more quiz fun on Walk a Mile with your genial quiz master, Bill Cullen. That's Wednesday night on the NBC Radio Network. Be sure to listen. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. One much of a ride, and Sheriff Schofield was sitting on Fred Wilmer's porch swing when I got there. He told me Doc was inside with Fred, so I squatted down on the stoop and waited. About half an hour later, Doc came out. Told us we could go inside and see Fred. Fred was lying on a cot, breathing hard. The white cloth across his chest was stained pink, and his voice sounded like it was full of air. We was just sitting talking. Sam and me didn't hear the back door open. Must have left it unlocked. Turned around and there he was. Holding his gun on. <laughs> Did you get a look at him, Fred? Sure, but it didn't do much good. Handkerchief over his face. Couldn't see nothing. Just the gun. Told Sam to open the safe. Wasn't nothing else Sam could do. Sure. Took the money. Walked over to the door. Yeah. Looked at us for a minute and then fired. Didn't have no reason. Hit Sam in the face. Hit me in the chest and couldn't have no reason. Now, <laughs> yeah, take it easy, Fred. It's just like he enjoyed shooting at us. That's how it was. Like he enjoyed it. Maybe he was scared. He wasn't scared. He didn't have no reason. 
And he killed us both. He started down the steps. I got my hand on the shotgun and I let him have it. You hit him? I don't know, maybe. He gave me yell and rode off. You go out back after him? I couldn't go nowhere, Britt. What kind of a fellow was he? Young? Old? I couldn't see his face. He's a young fellow, I'd say, though. How young? Old. Seventeen. Eighteen. He was full grown. You sure? He sounded young. He moved young. Tall? Short? Medium. What about the size of your kid, Ed? <laughs> about that size. <laughs> that enough for you, Ed? Yeah. Yeah, that's enough. You think you get him, Brett? Sure, Fred. Sure. Sure, we'll get him. Come on, Ed. Didn't have no reason to shoot. No reason to... Let's go, Ed. We're wasting our time, Brett. He's got a day's head start. He'd be 40 miles from here. Not if he's shot up. Well, you go on if you want to. Well, you're the sheriff. You've got to make the arrest. You ain't never been so particular before. Maybe not. Maybe not. This time I am particular. You coming? I don't even know where to start. Well, I thought along the creek. Good place as any other. It's a waste of time, Brett. We picked up the trail along the creek and headed west. It wasn't hard to follow. Every once in a while, we'd see a few drops of blood spattered against the bushes. About ten minutes later, we came to the fork where Ed said the trail gave out. Scar stuck his nose down into the water, and I looked around. The trail didn't give out. It turned south. I nodded in that direction. Ed didn't say anything. He just followed. Then about five o'clock, we stopped to eat. Ed built a fire, and I opened up a couple of cans of beans I had in a roll. Oh, you're not hungry, Ed? Uh, it's early for supper. It's too early. Yeah. Yeah. Ed, uh... I talked to Heavy before I went out to Fred's place. I, uh... I asked him who had a horse that would leave a mark like the one we've been following. So? He said that Ben did. Your son, Ben. I thought you ought to know that. A lot of horseshoes leave the same kind of mark. Fred said it was a young fellow. It wasn't Ben. Where is he, Ed? He's the Jefferson Ranch. He's working on a roundup. He left Clay City the day before yesterday. I couldn't have... Ben, Ben, there's, there's a lot of wild youngsters in these parts, but Ben's a good boy. If he couldn't be him. You sure? Now, that, that mark don't mean nothing. Plenty of horseshoes leave the same kind of mark. You know that, Britt. You got enough to eat? Yeah. All right, let's go. The moon came out, thin, yellow. Not real bright, but not so we could follow the trail. For about three miles, there wasn't any blood sign. He must have wrapped something around the wound, wrapped it real tight, and then... then we found the bandage. A piece of shirt tail sopped through. For the next mile, he'd been bleeding a lot, much worse than before. He was hurt pretty bad, Ed. Yeah, it looks like it. He couldn't have gone much further, could he? Hold up, Scott. Ed. Yeah? Pull up. Pull over here. Look. Over there in the gully, that cabin. Yeah. Whose is it? I used to belong to Jake Levante. Died a couple of years ago. Ain't nobody living there now. There's somebody living there. What? Out back. There's a pony. We'd better go on on foot. Yeah? We're gonna take him alive, ain't we? If we can. We gotta take him alive, Britt. It's Ben, isn't it? I... I don't know. Not for sure. It could be Ben? It could be. Where's he been the last couple of days? I don't know that either. I had an argument with him two nights ago. He... 
He needed some money. He'd been playing poker. He lost a lot. Now, the $5,000 that was taken out of that safe is a lot. Huh? I wouldn't give him none. He, he got mad. He said he'd get it. Said he'd get it himself. And I, I hit him. I hit him hard across the face. Hit him twice. He started to hit me back. And then he walked out of the house. And I ain't seen him since. I wish you had hit me back. Now, we've got to get across this clearing, Ed. Over to that clump of trees. Well, he may see us. We'll have to take that chance. You ready? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, sure. We'll stay in these trees for a couple of minutes. Okay. And then we'll rush him. It's not going to be easy to take him, Ed. Now that he's spotted us. Red, you ain't going to kill him. I'm not going to let him kill me. It ain't his fault, Brett. It's mine. You know that's not so. No, it's the truth. It's my fault. I broke him. I broke him like you break a wild horse. Tried to take all the fight out of him fast. You know what happens when you do that to a horse? He gets tame, but the fight's still there, and someday he turns wild again. He ain't really broke at all. I'm, I'm going to rush him alone, Ned. No, stay here. Sam Norton's dead. Maybe Fred Wilmer, too, by now. Killing Ben won't bring him back. He's my son. Brett. I'm sorry, Ed. No, we're going back to town. Not without him. We're going back. You can outdraw me, Britt, but I'll still have time to get a shot off. I'll try to get him alive, Ed. I'll try. No. Don't turn your back on me, Britt. Don't be fooled. Don't make me do it, Britt. I knew he wouldn't shoot. I wasn't being brave, but I knew he wouldn't shoot. A man like Ed Schofield just don't change overnight. You can figure a man like Ed. But I hadn't figured on what happened next. Ben, you're dead! Can you hear me, Ben? Brett Ponce is coming after you! Throw out your gun, Ben! Brett Ponce is coming! No, listen to me, Ben! I saw him go down, real slow, like his legs had buckled under him. I pushed myself past a couple of rocks and edged over toward the back door. The kid was in the kitchen. I couldn't see him, but I could hear him moving around, going from window to window, looking out waiting for me. I slid past another rock. I could run for the door now or wait. The kid made up my mind for me. He knew right where I was. I took out my gun and waited. I knew he'd get nervous first. Young fellas always do. I wasn't so young. I could wait. It was more than five minutes before the door started to open. His pony knew he was coming, too. He started for his horse. I aimed at his leg. For a second, he just stopped moving. Just hung there in midair like a hawk. And then he sprawled forward out of sight behind a log. Everything was quiet now. Even his pony. And then the moon went behind a thick cloud. And I came around the corner of the cabin. And then suddenly the moon came out again, and just in time for me to see his forty-five coming up over the top of the log. His revolver slipped out of his fingers, and I saw him try to reach for it, but he couldn't make it. I stood up, and I walked over to the log. I turned him over with my foot, and I looked at his face. Ed? Ed? Over here. Where'd he get you? The, the shoulder. But I'll be all right. Is he... Did you have to... Britt? No, he's not dead. Oh, uh, thanks. I, I, I guess he didn't hear me calling to him. Didn't know who I was. It isn't Ben. What? It isn't Ben, Ed. <laughs> you, you sure, Britt? Yeah, yeah. This kid's got red hair. There ain't no reason to lie to me, Britt. I ain't shot up bad. I'm not lying. I'm not lying, Ed. I knew it wasn't Ben. While I was going up there after him, I knew it. What are you talking about? Well, it just came to me. I don't know. A man don't change overnight. And neither does a boy. Well, if it ain't Ben, it... Oh, there's a lot of tough kids in these parts. You said so yourself. 
Where do you suppose Ben is? Where you said he is. Jefferson's Ranch, working on the roundup. The pay's good. Boy, don't change overnight, Ed. Yeah. You able to ride back to town? Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, I may have to take it a little slow. Sure, fine. We'll take it slow. Yeah. Well, I'll get the kid. Britt? Yeah? You, you know something, Britt? I, I couldn't believe it was Ben neither. Not when he shot me. I just, I just couldn't believe it. You know that, Britt? I know. Sure, I know, Ed. Picture the most extravagant vacation imaginable. Then picture yourself going on that vacation. Sounds like a daydream? Well, it isn't. It's completely possible. But it does take a bit of planning, such as the regular purchase of United States savings bonds. Now, the best way to do that is through the payroll savings plan. That's the best way because it's the sure way to buy your savings bonds regularly. The payroll savings plan works like a charm because it's completely automatic. Your employer does everything for you. It's especially easy on you because money is saved from your paychecks before you have a chance to miss it. And when those bonds mature, you can pack your bags for that extravagant vacation. Because United States savings bonds pay back $4 for every $3 you put in. Join the payroll savings plan where you work. That's the way to save money regularly. Earn extra money regularly through United States savings bonds. The Six Shooter is an NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt, and the transcribed story is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture Thunder Bay. Others in the cast were Parley Bear, Jimmy McCallion, Herb Bygren, and Bill Conrad. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. <laughs>